Connecticut ranks 19th for public transportation usage, according to U.S. News & World Report, which some people may find surprising. It's my general sense that in Connecticut, if you don't use public transportation, then you're generally not that aware of it. When I'm on the internet and people moving to Connecticut post questions about whether they need a car here, the responses in the comments are overwhelmingly one-sided. Yes, you absolutely need a car. And although I live in an area that necessitates having one, I first got interested in Connecticut's transportation system after covering a dispute between bus drivers and Connecticut Transit over bathroom breaks last year. I got curious, where exactly is mass transit available in the state? And as I began to look into it, I was pretty surprised about how extensive the system actually is. So I decided to put it on a map. But before I get into the details, I want to first explain my criteria of mass transit. First, while the mode of transportation does not have to be public owned, it must be open to the public. For example, some large businesses charter buses for employees, and colleges frequently have shuttles for their students. Both of these, though, are not open to the general public, so I chose not to include them. Second, all modes of transportation must have fixed schedules. For example, there are a number of limousine services in Connecticut that are open to the public, but they're only available on demand. Last, the primary purpose of these modes of transportation must be transportation itself. For example, the Thames River water taxi in Groton and New London, or the steam train in Essex, or the river boat in Deep River. They're fun leisure activities, but their main purpose is not to transport people. Now that we have that out of the way, let's start at the opposite end of the spectrum the towns with no real access to mass transit. Out of 169 towns in Connecticut, only 39 fall into this category. That's around 23%, which means that around 77% of towns do have access to some form of mass transit. Is that more than you expected? When people think of public transportation, they generally talk about buses, trams, trains, and subways. Connecticut has no trams or subways, but we do have buses and trains. In fact, Connecticut just opened a new train line from Hartford to New Haven called, appropriately, the Hartford Line. It joins the Shoreline East Line, which goes from Stamford all the way to New London along the coast. But these two lines are not nearly as expansive as the New Haven Line, run by Metro North Railroad. Last, if you're looking to travel longer distances, then Amtrak is also available. But the real public transportation powerhouse in Connecticut is the bus. Most are run directly by Connecticut Transit. I've included in here both local and express buses. As you can see, there's a lot of area covered. Connecticut Transit is also accompanied by 10 local bus operators. Estuary Transit District, Greater Bridgeport Transit Authority, Housatonic Area Regional Transit, Middletown Transit District, Milford Transit District, Northeastern Connecticut Transit District, Northwestern Connecticut Transit District, Southeast Area Transit District, Wyndham Region Transit District, and Norwalk Transit District. Additionally, in 2015, Connecticut Transit debuted Connecticut Fast Track, a rapid bus system between New Britain and Hartford. And if you want to go out of state on a private bus line, Greyhound and Peter Pan are your best bet. You might think that's all, but there are two more categories that I thought were worth mentioning. The first is airports. Both Bradley International Airport in Windsor Locks and Tweed New Haven Airport are commercial airports open to the public. The last category is one that is often forgotten, ferries. The Chester Hadline Ferry and the Rocky Hill Glastonbury Ferry are both seasonal ferries that can be used by commuters, while the Cross Sound Ferry, New London Block Island Ferry, and Bridgeport Port Jefferson Ferry are available year round. Now, before we continue, I want to point out what I'm sure that some viewers are thinking. These maps are not perfect. Just because mass transit is available in one part of town does not mean that everyone lives close enough for it to be useful, nor does it mean that every route will take everyone where they want to go. To be honest, I think Connecticut has a long way to go if we're serious about getting more people to use mass transit, and there probably needs to be a much bigger discussion about zoning. But I don't see that happening anytime soon, 
And I also think that many people believe that they would much prefer driving on their own than using mass transit even part of the time. But there are some glimmers of hope. Connecticut does have a number of park and ride lots, usually near highway entrances, where people can park their cars, ride mass transit, or even carpool to their destination. Additionally, developers in the state have been increasingly building apartments with proximity to mass transit kept in mind. The last thing I compiled was how many mass transit options are available in each town. Feel free to let me know in the comments if I got anything wrong, and larger versions of the images will be available in the video description. But to be clear, the scores listed here are not perfect. For example, a town with just one bus stop will receive the same score as a town with an entire bus route. But the map does tell a story that many people might not realize, about how many options are actually available in Connecticut.